Well, we are going to be interviewing Zephyrin uh, because he is um, a graduate from our NCAP certificate program and also um, because he just, he got into SWAYA. I am Zephyrin Anderson, um, I'm from Shiprock. I'm a weaver and silversmith. I did go through, uh, I think, six years. No, no, six semesters at NCAP, right? With the apprenticeship. Oh, <laughs> we know you. <laughs> I got to know everyone enough that when I got stuck in a snowdrift in the mountains, NCAP rescued me. <laughs> That's how we do. Once you're an NCAPer, you're an NCAPer for life. <laughs> Tell us your reaction when you found out you got into the SWIA market. I would tell every artist you won't know until it happens to you uh, because I did apply um, previous to SWIA and would always get that regret to inform you um, that you have not been chosen this year. And then the next letter will be, uh, you've been waitlisted, uh, keep the eyes out. Uh, we'll call you if uh, you know a booth opens up and you probably won't get called. And then the next year you'll get waitlisted again, but then you call and then there'll be just that awesome year where you get that letter where it's just one little letter at, um, with about a quarter inch of other materials. And usually when you get that one, you know that something's different. That's when I got Once you're juried in, there's another part of the, the, the journey as an artist is finding your place in the giant map. So I started um, on Santa Fe, place or Santa Fe, uh, no, San Francisco Street, and then slowly moving up to where, you know, it was supposed to be this year. Next, Next year, I'm going to have a Center Plaza booth. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm very excited for, for this next, when, when this is all over and everyone's going to be celebrating that they have all those little white tents up. Um, I'm going to, it's going to be my first year on the plaza. And I did that within three years, which is, I think is a very fast, a fast pace. And I'm so humbled by the experience and everyone I've met, uh, you know, NCAB, all the teachers there. And I'm just, I'm, I'll be a, I'll be forever grateful for all the elders that were open-minded. Um, because in, in our family, we did have a 15 year break in weaving, you know, it, no one, no one learned to weave directly um, from my Masane. Uh, just when she saw a few things, she said, this is how things are. This is the way you do this. And that was, we did that without me understanding Navajo. And that's as close as I got to her line of weaving, but the rest of it was just everyone I've met and, you know, the, the helpful people that made me see these really rare weavings in the museum collections that are marked um, from our people, our weavers, our men and women, but you know they're just silently sitting there waiting to tell their story. And luckily for everyone that I see, I keep telling that story. And it's an awesome experience. With the Santa Fe Indian Market, which categories are you um, juried in? Um, there's textiles, my first one is silversmithing, and then diverse arts. Um, I always recommend most of uh, weavers, most silversmith, um, jury out for diverse arts, because there will be new ideas and new things that you may not be able to enter into your traditional categories, such as textiles or, you know, traditional silversmithing. But if you have diverse arts in the UFL, it will go in because the materials are just so open category. Um, I did a cup out of um, 
Navajo silversmithing. And it used to be something Navajo silversmiths were known for, especially with the Harvey houses, to make uh, teapots, uh, butter spreaders, uh, forks, ladles, and mugs. Uh, but no one, no one makes a lot of those anymore. So even though it is an old traditional silversmithing, all the cups I've done for flatware and open hollowware have gone into diverse arts. So uh, you sometimes you'll see some of my silversmithing objects come up against um, like a mixture, like they'll have uh, porcupine quills with glass beads and um, hide work. Or last year there was a painted buffalo hide that had electronics in it to make the lights blink. So it, it's interesting. It's like, oh, maybe I can make a cup that has lights and plays music while you drink. <laughs> There's always, there's always room for um, innovation with anything. Um, um, what, what's it been like making your website? You're always learning and you'll always be out of your comfort zone because the, the, the website programming now is totally different from being able to manually edit HTML. Um, everything has a tutorial, so it's just working with this. Uh, making drafts and you have to test it uh, because it's your art if your art isn't accessible as a periodical in a public library it may not reach its buyer so you want to make it as easy uh, going and navigation everything straightforward right there within two clicks they get to what they want um, because I don't want it to be like one of my lessons where I give you 15 minutes of backstory before we get near the weaving. <laughs> so having a website is like you create your own neighborhood, you create your own experience. You have a virtual shop, uh, gallery, uh, a place that you control visually and uh, the sound and sight for people to experience from their own home, uh, which means more now, um, in the future, probably have to make that an actual de facto store and gallery. But a website is a really cost effective way of building that virtually since everything is virtually now. So it, it, it's been a new learning experience. I want artists to know you're never too old to learn things. It may be intimidating, it may not make sense because I learned how to do this manually and manually still makes sense to me, but you know, I was able to make something nice um, in just an hour. And that's what my, my placeholder now is on my website is basically, I got a background in and a video. Luckily as a textile weaver, you know, inventory is manageable. <laughs> um, All right, speaking of um, inventory, uh, what piece are you most proud of? Well, I know what I'll be most proud of when I finish it, but right now it's just, this the obsidian lightning um, double saddle quill blanket. I don't know if I can get it. There we go. Um, wow. My grandpa's grandmother, maternal grandmother was salt plant. And all she did um, was weave black and white with a little bit of gray or brown twills. And I've taken photographs that my aunts and uncles have given me to work out some of the saddle blanket counts that she had um, in, in her repertoire. So uh, I've been giving these reweaving out to my aunts and uncles uh, because they said, you know, when I was three or five, I remember, I remember that blanket or what we were using for, for a rug. And we watched your, watched their great grandmother weave it. And it made them happy. And as a weaver, it's a chore to make things simple when you always want to put every color and design um, into the weaving. So I, I made the deal with this weaving was that my mind would create this pattern 
if I stuck to the old pattern uh, for the borders. So this one is a double. And as you can tell, because of the way with the people I've met and seen old twills, you see how it has this nice softness to it, like you can see it. Um, this one's my favorite now. And as soon as other other weavings are done, they'll always be favorite, but you know, it's like when you're raising sheep or I suppose when you're a mother and you have lots of kids, they're all your favorites. <laughs> you tell each one you're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so you never really know what the real favorite is because everyone's your favorite. We're almost done. The next question is, why is Swaya important to you as an emerging artist? Why is important to me as an emerging artist? Because that's where I learn how I can adapt my cultural knowledge and um, my my sweat and my energy into something that a person values more than just you know the exchange of acquiring that art but something that they'll look at and it makes them smile it makes them think of the story i told or it makes me think of me or uh our people uh, and not it's a hard thing to do um, it's much like, you know, being a public speaker or an actor. It's your relationship or in the home that you're weaving is going to. And with Swaya, there's so many different types of collectors and, and people willing to buy art. Um, you'll have people that are really particular with what you should be doing or like if they commission something there's a lot of strict rules on what to create and then there are some that just make it beautiful whatever you whatever you want you do and that's that's the people i like um or like i'm if i wanted to do something totally out there i would still have support um, otherwise, I could just be making reproductions of everything I see. Um, so I think that's how, you know, as artists, we, how things keep evolving. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great, um, great way to explain that. And, and I don't think, you know, um, we're not sure if Swaya knows that you know, they are, they are providing that kind of platform for our native artists. And, um, and I think that is something that's, that's very neat to share to your viewers and to our viewers and to Swaya viewers that um, this is something that's a part of people's lives and it changes their, their lives as well. And it's, and, and, it, and, and it's, we're fortunate that, you know, there's Swaya and that we're able to use Swaya as that platform to continue our work, to continue to share those stories, to continue to um, reach out and collaborate with other individuals. Yeah. Um, Zephyrin, so last question before we close out, um, where can people find your work? You just want a, a broad sense of the visual style I have. I have my Instagram, uh, www.instagram.com backslash Zephyrin M. Um, it might be Zephyrin hyphen M, that's Zephyrin with an N dash M. Uh, um, there's always Facebook. Um, you don't have to request me as a personal friend uh, to see all of my work. I do have a community page where you can view my work. But that one's at um, Zephyrin M Weaving um, on, face on Facebook for my community page. But if you just put Zephyrin M, you'll get you'll get there eventually. There's a lot of public posts on there, so I'm out there. Uh, you can put Zephyrin M on Google, and you'll bring up several interviews and other stuff that have already been around, published. And yeah, I 
just Google me. <laughs> also, um, for your Swaya website, um, where can they find that? Uh, when the main portal for the curated uh, shows happens, our names will be all in there. It'd be like a giant show of artists. So like you can look things up by weaving textiles or silversmithing uh, and find us. Uh, before Swaya, I used my birth name instead of the, you know, the branding I use for my weaving. So if Zephyr M does not get you um, my weavings on Swaya, you're going to have to use Ephraim Anderson, which is E-P-H-R-A-I-M, as in Michael, Anderson with an O. <laughs> Um, and then you'll see my weavings. Uh, Swaya seems to be promoting more of my silversmithing than any of my textiles. So you'll see a lot of my uh, my rib bracelets for, you know, and I always want to thank Lyndon. I always want to thank my, uh, my, my, my grand uncle, Wilson Arnold and Christine Ami, you, uh, Crystal and everyone at NCAP and even the other students, we all learned this together. I really am thankful for the Met College and you know, the Naval Cultural Arts Program for allowing me to, to have clarity in that understanding. As you, you've always been taught these things, but you know, you know, even even with the language barrier that I have, still learning the language, the philosophy and everything now clicks. And now these the, the rules and you know the different ways that we we think. They make sense because that's all it was preparing us for. So there you have it. We have our NCAP graduate, Zephyrin Anderson here. He's also um, Herd Museum 2018 Best of Show winner here. So um, go to this Y website again and you can check out his work and possibly purchase from him. And yeah, so that's going to be it for now. Um, thank you for joining us, Zephyrin. We really appreciate it. We, it's always good to catch up with our anchor. Bye. Bye. Zephyrin, your art.